What has God told us to do regarding forgiving our enemies? Pray for them? Come on, don't sit there and look so innocent. How many of you actually really sincerely pray for the people that have hurt you to be blessed? Yeah, well, we got a few holy hands up, but not very many, let me tell you. You know why? Because the truth is you don't want them to be blessed. And I get that, and I'll even tell God that sometimes, I, you know. The Bible says that you bless and do not curse them. To bless means to speak well of, to curse means to speak evil of. So that means you got to stop retelling everybody what they did to you over and over and over and over and over and over. You got to zip your lip, pray for God to bless them. It is very hard to keep hating somebody that you're praying for every day. Come on, don't make me come down there. I said, it's very hard. Oh, you know. The best thing that you can do when you've got an enemy is send them a present. Now that went over big. I don't, I'll tell you the story. Somebody came to the office one day and they were all upset because they'd been in a local restaurant and were sitting at a table where somebody sitting in the booth beside them was cutting down us and our ministry. Well, the person doing the gossiping happened to be somebody that we did business with who made a lot of money off of the business that we gave them. And boy, I wish they wouldn't have told me. You know, sometimes you just don't need to tell people stuff. But so now they told me, so now I gotta try to deal with this thing. And I was spitting, popping mad. I mean, I was like, that's it. I will not do business with them again. That is not right for them to sit and gossip about me. I'm going to let them know that bad, 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 bad. And I went on like that. You know, you know how we are in our head making plans on how we're going <laughs> to. Come on, you ever lay around and just make plans on. I'm going to say, and I'm going to do, and I'm not going to do. And so I, it's like, like, I don't know, two, three o'clock in the morning, and I'm still thinking about what I'm going to do. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me, and he said, you know, really, you're not going to do any of that. <laughs> and I said, well, what am I going to do? He said, you're going to do what you teach. You're going to send them a gift. Well, I wrote a book called Me and My Big Mouth, and I'm telling you what, I so desperately wanted to send them a copy of that. <laughs> you don't know how bad I wanted to send them that. Oh, but we ended up sending them gift certificates to go out and eat and yada, yada, yada. But here's the thing, the minute laying in that bed that night, the minute, the instant that I made the decision to do what God had told me to do, the burden lifted off of me. My jo I hadn't even done it yet, but because I knew I was going to do it, joy returned, and I could see the humor in the whole thing, how it defeats the devil when you turn around and you're good to somebody who mistreated you. Come on. Okay, now, you don't have to feel like praying for somebody to be blessed to pray for them. You do it in obedience to God. You don't have to feel like blessing your enemies, but you can do it in obedience to God. And it's perfectly fine if you say, you know, God, I don't feel like doing this, but I love you so much that I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do, because I believe that your word works. And so I'm just going to tell you right now, you are going to be living in this stupid, ugly pit the rest of your life if you don't make a decision that you are not going to live angry and you are going to start getting so good at forgiveness that you are going to give the devil a breakdown. Lord, help me. Number four, no more self-pity. You know, no matter how bad you think you've got it, there's somebody else in this room right now tonight that's got it worse than you do. Count your blessings, and I mean that. I've been doing something the last week or so, week and a half. I don't know how hard it'll get after I do it a while, probably harder, but I'm writing down 10 things every day that I'm thankful for 
in my journal, but I made a commitment that they had to be 10 different things every day. <laughs> they can't be the same thing. It's getting pretty interesting, but you'd be amazed. I mean, really just jaw-dropping amazed at all the things that we have to be thankful for if we would just actually stop for a minute and pay attention to them. It would so drive self-pity out of your life that it would have no way to even hope to get in. Number five. Woo, I love this. I wish I had an hour and a half. Stop blaming other people for your problems. Oh good, I got three people in this section that like that idea. Come on, folks. These conferences are hard. I need a little bit of encouragement. I want to see how many of you are doing this when you're 73. Amen. Stop blaming everybody else for your problems. Own your own junk. <laughs> Own it. I have a bad attitude. And my attitude belongs to me, and nobody can make me have one if I don't want to. Own it. Take responsibility for it. I'm having a lousy day. Well, I think it's your fault. Well, no, I can choose to have a good day if I want to. Nobody else can make you have a bad day if you really don't want to have a bad day. Oh, blame started in the garden. Adam was dumb enough to listen to Eve, and she was dumb enough to listen to the devil. And when they got themselves in trouble, he blamed her, she blamed the devil and God. Everything, you know, everybody had to take responsibility in the end. Abram listened to Sarah. Then he, she blamed him when, you know the thing, I don't have time to go there. Numbers 21.5, the people got tired of being out in the wilderness. They blamed God and Moses. You know, as long as we blame, we're never going to get anywhere. Here's the thing. What my dad did to me when I was a child in sexually abusing me was the reason why I had the problems I had. But I had to stop using that as an excuse to stay that way. Come on, hear me. That was the reason, but my, the reason now became an excuse to stay parked at the point of my pain. And so I had to stop blaming, start realizing that all painful, hurtful things come from the devil. He just finds somebody to work through. And I figured out how to get him back. And the way you get the devil back is by doing as much good as you can every day of your life to as many people as you can as long as you breathe. <laughs> Romans 12, 21, we overcome evil with good. One of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible. That's why God says, bless your enemies. Pray for those who treat you cruelly. That's why it does no good to blame people who hurt you. The only reason why they hurt you is because somebody hurt them and they haven't had any healing in their life yet. Amen? Stop making excuses. That's number what? Seven, I guess. Eight, whatever it is. Stay in the Word, 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 stay in the Word. Amen? Can I have, is the medicine bottle out here? Ah, uh, never mind. It's okay. We got this huge life-size medicine bottle. You know, the Word, just like you might take an aspirin if you got a headache, there's something in the Word for everything that ails you. All you got to do is take it. 
You got a prescription that's got as many refills as you'll ever want. And you can't take too much. The Word of God is one thing you cannot overdose on. Be patient. Let the Holy Spirit lead and help as many people as you can possibly help. Now, here's an option that you have that I would like to see you take. One day, a farmer's donkey fell into a pit, and the animal cried piteously for hours and hours for the farmer was trying to figure out what he should do. <laughs> Finally, he decided the animal was too old to really mess with and just needed to be killed, and so he thought, well, while he's down there, we'll just cover him up with dirt and just let him die down there. So he got a bunch of neighbors, and they started shoveling dirt in on the donkey. Shovel after shovel, the donkey cried piteously, horribly. They heard these sounds coming out of the pit. Then to everybody's amazement, all of a sudden, it got real quiet down there, and I guess they thought he'd died. A few more shovel loads later, the farmer looked down the well and was astonished at what he saw. Every time they would throw a few shovels of dirt on the donkey's back, he'd shake it off and get up on top of it. And they'd throw some more down there, and he'd shake it off and get up on top of it. He was getting closer and closer to the top of that well. A few more shovels full, and he shook it off, got up on top of it. If people throw enough junk on you, and you shake it off, and you keep getting on top of it, one day, you'll just walk off and go take your place in the palace. Come on, give God a big praise. We're gonna be gold medal Olympiad champions for Christ. I pray for you in Jesus' name that every one of you that are hurting, that have been hurt, that are hurting because of something you've done in your life or something that's been done to you, that as of tonight, you would receive God's love, receive his forgiveness, forgive yourself, forgive the people who hurt you, and that you would decide that you are gonna let what's happened to you make you stronger, make you better, and lift you to a higher place.